They should uh, make sports centers for young people where they could go and get involved in things that they really want to because some parents they might not afford their children to go actually to sports centers. I think if they, anyone like the just our border council or government nationally, whoever it is, improves the aesthetic part of our community, people will take more pride in the area and be more proud of where they're from. Because I live on a traveller site, it would be good for like free transport for kids and stuff. So if there was more places for children to go and young children to go and play, and that if there was, um, it was easier for adults to get jobs to provide money so that they could live. <laughs> Young people in our area have absolutely nothing to do. All they ever do is vandalise, steal. So much crime happens in our area. And there is the odd people, such as people that have come to this place today, try and sort it out. So I really do think we need some more like centres and everything for young people to go in. I think that it should be aimed at the adults, like gives them better chances to get training and better jobs so that they can then have the right income to help their children get along in life and give them enough money to help them have the right stuff and all the stuff they need for education and their life skills. If the government so, uh, push people to do their best all the time, especially in school and in our area especially we have uh, one of the highest rates of teenage pregnancies which cause children to be born before the parents can actually keep up and thus they all fall into big whirlwind of money problems. Well um, you can start off by you know boosting up the child benefits but instead of getting um, cash you can start off by um, getting a voucher and you know which can only be spent in certain stores so that you know you can't so the fa mother and father can't spend it on drugs or anything else. Training for work that they like for chosen subjects that they would want to do um, funding for stuff that they need as in school stuff, transport or projects that they'd like to start. Better education on how to get a job, how to manage your own household and how to fill in forms. I think more job opportunities for people um, so that people can don't have to live, can actually have a, find a job that they want to do and um, kind of if they're living in poverty that they work their way out of it. And also more training like at the Job Seeker Alliance and um, also like apprenticeship schemes and things like that. Um, educate the people that are living in poverty on how to get themselves out and, and different steps to take. If it, we did reduce child poverty it w I think it would just be so much better, there'd be so more improvements. Kids living on the streets all the time, they've got nowhere to go. If there are people with more than others, then they're not going to get along and they're not going to have a friendship because of just the way that some people have been brought up. I think it is really important because these problems that are here now aren't going to go away if the generations are growing up and they're still in the same time. So it needs to be really eradicated. If there's child poverty, it can lead to bullying, discrimination and racism as well. So like, if you eliminate child poverty, then it can Im uh, eliminate all those three problems as well. I think it is important because it can't be carried on, because uh, there are many people who need some help, and I think we should help them. Because people are starving and dying in the world and catching AIDS, and they're not getting their proper three-course meal that should be getting a day and they're down quicker. Because it's just bad. <laughs> it's like people are suffering over just different things like lack of schooling, lack of money, lack of water. If you'd be able to like afford 
um, food, housing and live you know, in a good life and that's everyone, so it's, um, it's very important. All the young people in 2006 are going to be the same age as you when in say 2020 and they're going to be the future so you can't really, you don't want them being how they are now. Pay us not just the small little wage that we get because we're not like we're the same well we're not the same as grown-ups but we need like to buy clothes and everything like that just support us i think there should be um people working to help um young people get either weekend jobs or night jobs or easier for them to when to come out to school so maybe another organization to just help young people specifically you get the odd newspaper round that people want to do, but that isn't a job. That's like £4 a week, £8 a week. What's that going to get you? That ain't even going to get you a pair of knickers, to be honest with you. <laughs> Sorry, but it isn't. And that's the reason why if, if, they give, if they did give young people jobs, like part-time jobs, anything, that earns them a bit of pocket money, that gets them around, that stops them from vandalising and everything. And... Th I think they'll believe that they can do it, you know what I mean? If they believe in it, we can believe in them. I think the government should encourage employers to advertise jobs to youngsters at the first place, 13 plus when you can work, such as local news agent could put out advertisements for paper rounds and so on. That, and this way people will learn to, to keep, uh, keep working for a living and not just depend on their parents. I think that in every small area, in places like Derby and Nottingham and places like that, that there should be young people centres that offer training and support for people to help them build up a career and get, even if it's just a Saturday job or an after school job, so they can help income in the house, which will also rule out child poverty. There should be many social services which could actually ask young people after when they finish school how, what job they wanted to do and how could they make their lives easier to find a job and then whether they like that job or not. Um, I think that they should like have more courses and make them like more like better education and stuff. Set up jobs for us. Yeah. Hairdressing. <laughs> Provide specific jobs for young people, not stuff like paper rounds or something like that where you ride around on your bike, but like say a mechanics course, but instead of doing the dangerous stuff that you might end up taking off your finger. Safer stuff but chosen for young people but not like here's a spanner type work. Ensure basic education and like literary skills and maths are sustained and achieved in high schools. That would be probably one of the, the main because you can't get a job unless you've got sufficient English skills nowadays. I think it would be to make the job centre much less scary. It's really formal and people aren't used to that anymore um, at the moment. So perhaps if uh, they did, you know, interview things in schools that you could go along to and would just make it a little bit less uh, intimidating. Well, um, you know, if you fail at school and you have no GCSEs or nothing, well, um, the government should, should do their best to see what you were good at, what were your talents in class. And, you know, basically they should move on and just tell you, you know, look, these are your choices, what we're giving you. And, you know, whichever one you want to go with will, get, will um, help you on. I think they enjoyed putting those questions together and being able to do that and hopefully they can make and see a difference. I thought the event was absolutely fantastic. Uh, what an opportunity to come into central London to uh, in, uh, the seat of power in Westminster really uh, and for a young person to actually participate and have his voice and opinions heard. It will be benefiting lots of people. Well, I was impressed that the Minister um, listened to what Lily had to say about travellers and sites and having nowhere to live. Um, and I know that Lily wants to follow that up with him and that he's all given her his address and his email address and that she's promised to write and give him some more information. So I've got quite high hopes that actually he will actually follow through with this. I thought he was quite sincere. The way you planned it and, you know, the press and, you know, the things you're doing, like, um, what did that bridge, you know, 
things that I thought, you know, they make you think more than what you thought before.